Hello and welcome to Mum's Homestead. Thank you for joining me here today on the channel uh, and I would like to say a massive thank you for all the comments and suggestions and the support with my last video. It obviously has proved a bit of a hit with you guys uh, and yes I will be producing more content like that. I'll also be carrying on with some of the homesteading stuff too and doing a bit of a mix of both. So uh, yeah, I really, really appreciate all the comments and suggestions. It really does encourage me. It also, um, I also love the community that's sort of growing out of this channel. Um, I find it really, really inspiring um, and encouraging to see all the chat that's going on and everyone uh, communicating in different ways so really thank you for all your support with that so uh, anyway let's get into the video um, it's a bit of a mix today we've got a little bit of homesteading bits and pieces we've got some frugal tips and suggestions and um, we're also heading out on a foraging walk too so let's get straight into the video so one of the first things we're going to be doing today is making a soup this is a really delicious lentil and vegetable soup. I've been making it for years and I absolutely love it. So let's crack on with making the soup. Love this soup. It's been a soup that um, John's mum passed down to me. It was from her gran and all of the aunts and lots of the family use it. Um, and I really, really like it. And it's so simple and easy to do. And it's nutritious, it's tasty and yeah, we eat it all the time. Um, I've got um, a big family gathering today and they've actually asked for this soup. So I'm going to crack on with it. And it's pretty frugal too. So I'm just going to spin you around to show you some of the ingredients. You'll need carrots, potatoes, onions, parsnips or turnips or swede or something like that. I've got a piece of celery that's going a bit floppy in the fridge. So we're going to use that today red lentils, garlic, veg stock and various herbs and things, whatever you've got. Um, I'm probably going to add a few more vegetables to this. I'm just going to see how it tastes, but um, I'm going to be hopefully filling up that stock pot. Um, I'm, it's possibly going to be more carroty than normal as carrots were on special offer at them this week. Um, they were 19 pence a bag, so I've picked up a couple of bags of them. Um, so I may fill up with that and I think I'm going to add a few more onions in um, but it's a recipe that's so good you can just add in whatever you want really but so as long as you stick to the basics of the onions the carrots the potatoes um, parsnips and lentils you can kind of get away with adding whatever you've got so if you've got a little bit of extra cabbage or broccoli stems or things like that you want to just chuck in just go ahead and do it Okay, so I'm going to prepare these and I'll come back in a moment. Okay, so I've chopped up my vegetables and in this pot, I always do this whenever I'm preparing vegetables, I keep a pot to put all the skins and everything in um, and then I will use them to make a stock. Um, tonight we're going to have a roast chicken and when we boil up the carcass at the end, I'm going to add all of these in um, to add extra flavour. So that's a, another tip, don't throw away all of your scraps. I'm going to pop a lid on that and pop that in the fridge to keep it fresh until then. Um, so I'm just going to roughly chop all of my vegetables and then I'm going to start cooking. So in the pan, I've got the onions, the garlic and the celery and I'm just going to lightly cook that for a couple of minutes. Um, and then all I'm going to do is add all the rest of the veg and the stock and the lentils and just cook it away. So just give this a few minutes just to brown off the onions. Um, I've just used um, a vegetable oil. Um, it's a sunflower oil actually, just a cheap sunflower oil. So as you can see, they're just slightly browning off now. And all I'm going to do is add all the rest of the extra veg. And 
and I'll give it a stir. And as you can see, I've just chopped them up really roughly. Um, I'm not worried if I've left the odd skin on here or there because it's going to be blended up. Um, so, again, I'm not too worried. I will try and do a rough costing of the soup. Right, I'm going to add a few herbs. Usually I add um, homegrown herbs, but we have got nothing in this garden, so we need to start again. So I am adding some dried. And again, whatever you've got, but um, I find the ones that work particularly well. I've got some sage, some thyme, some oregano. Um, usually I add rosemary as well um, from the garden. And parsley. I usually have a lot of parsley, um, but as I say, we have none. Um, and the next thing would be some lentils. Now I go by eye, so I'm just going to pour quite a lot because this is going to be doing quite a lot of people. The lentils and then the stock. Now I've got two stock cubes because it's a large amount. So, I've actually added to mine about two litres of water, and um, that's because it's quite a large quantity, but it's also, it's actually a really good idea to make it in a large quantity, because then you've got lots of meals um, ready for whatever you need them, so you're saving money again. Um, I will adjust the seasoning and taste it as I go along, but basically now, I'm just going to bring this up to the boil, stirring to make sure the lentils don't um, stick to the bottom. And then we will cook this for about 45 minutes and we'll come back to it then once it's cooked. And don't forget, always put a lid on as that massively reduces your energy bill as you're not losing all that heat out of the top. So don't forget to put a lid on. Okay, so another way that I like to save a few pennies is to uh, divide or to buy herbs from the garden centre or the supermarket. These are supermarket ones. Um, I've got some parsley and some basil. And what you get in these is stacks and stacks of individual plants. So I like to divide them up and then I will gradually harden them off and put them out into the garden. And so for the cost of one of these, I can end up, well, looking at this, there's about 15 to 20 plants in there. So potentially I can end up with 15 to 20 plants and the same with the basil. I've never been as successful with basil, so I'm going to give it a go again um, and see what happens. I seem to find it more successful to sow basil from seed um, however, I will give this one a go again and see what happens. So we're just going to head into the potting shed and 
show you what I do. So the light is not that brilliant in here, but we're just going to see how we can make this work. Um, now I've bought some compost recently and I bought some peat free compost um, and I'm just going to show you. So yeah, I've bought some compost, some peat free compost and this is what it's like. It's quite um, fibrous um, and what I've found is that the birds seem to love it. Um, and they, I pricked out, well, my daughter pricked out a whole tray of salad leaves and um, seedlings the other day. And I put them out during the day um, and about an hour later I came along and I'm assuming it was a blackbird had come along. And I thought something had attacked all the seedlings, but I worked it out that they were after the um, compost, I'm assuming, because it looks sort of mossy and it's perfect for nesting material. So, um, yeah, it's been a bit... <laughs> A bit of a learning curve with the peat free compost. Anyway, let's show you what I'm up to with these seedlings. So I'm going to fill a pot. So I've got some compost and I have got a little bit of grit. You don't need to use grit, um, but I like to use it. I'm just using various pots that I've got from around the garden. Just have a look there. Look at all those roots. And I'm just very carefully going to try and tease this out. Oh, there we go. So we've got one there. And I've still got it, I've still got it fully attached. And we'll just pop it in the pot and fill it with some soil. And that is a basil plant. Um, I'll give it a good watering and gradually harden it off to plant it outside. Now for the basil, let's see how this goes. Um, I have less hopes for this one, but we'll see. Um, let's have a go. So these ones are more sort of tough in the pot. Cool. Right. Okay, so you can see the difference with the sort of root systems on them. But they have roots, so hopefully they should take. So there you have it. 22 parsley plants and 15 basil plants, um, all from two pots from the supermarket. So uh, as long as they all take, I think that's not a bad return. As you had just arrived for our picnic and we're just going to have that first we've got egg sandwiches uh, leftover chicken sandwiches um, and we're just munching away on those um, and then we're going to head out for a walk we're now coming through a beautiful woodland full of bluebells i don't know if you can see them on camera because it's so bright but I will just spin you around to show you.
England at this time of, time of year is absolutely beautiful. Right, so what I was saying back there uh, is all about the dandelions. Those fields were full of dandelions, absolutely full of them. Whenever you're out on a walk, always take a bag with you because you never know what you're going to find. Make sure you've got the landowner's permission to forage um, and also make sure you know exactly what you're after um, and that you can identify it. So for instance, bluebells, poisonous, don't touch them. Admire the beauty, but don't touch them. Um, but the dandelions, you can make dandelion wine, dandelion honey, dandelion syrup, dandelion fritters, they're particularly good. So many things, and they're supposed to be really good. And also, don't forget the dandelion leaves. Lovely in a salad. Um, oh, dandelion tea, too. So, yeah. Now here, I'm just going to spin you around here. Ah, oh, don't know if you can see, just here. Try not to prickle my fingers. Just here are brambles. And um, obviously they grow blackberries. Um, I do believe, I've not done it, but um, I do believe you can have the leaves as a tea, um, like you do with raspberry leaf. Always have your eyes looking down at the ground or up at the trees or in the hedgerows. Oh, now behind me here, another field full of dandelions. They're absolutely everywhere. Now I'm still building up my knowledge of wild things. But what I try and do is every year, I try and learn at least two new uh, wild plants that I can become completely familiar with. And it's amazing then how confident you become with your uh, knowledge and your identification. So that's a really good tip I find that, you know, to really set, it, set yourself the task of learning everything there is to know about a particular thing um, and perhaps do a couple of year or maybe a couple of season, I don't know. Um, and try not to look at too many things all at once because then you might get a bit confused. Really know your identification. So here's another one. This is known as, this is the hawthorn tree. Um, it, it's got white flowers in, usually in May time, although that's becoming earlier and earlier. It's known as the Mayflower. Um, so where I live, it's all coming out in flower, but here um, it's a bit more exposed and it hasn't. But the, the leaves are edible at this time of year. Again, make sure you know your identification. And it's known, I don't know if you can see, as bread and cheese. Um, and people would eat these, but yeah, the leaves are apparently edible. I have tasted them, they're not that great. I mean, I have to say, a lot of the leaves and things that are edible don't taste that great, but if you add them into a salad or something, then you're getting... So you're getting all the nutrition, um, and um, the, as I say, the leaves, a lot of them aren't particularly tasty, but I tend to add them into salads and things so that I'm not tasting, because a lot of them are quite bitter, so I'm not tasting the bitter bitterness, but I'm um, saving a little bit of money on my greens, um, getting something for free, and also the nutrition far, far outweighs anything you're going to buy from the supermarket. You've picked it fresh, um, it's been grown as nature intended, so yeah, so that's Hawthorn leaves. What have we seen so far? We've seen dandelions, hawthorn leaves, did I see some? oh brambles. Um, never seen any wild garlic on locally to me. I'm assuming it doesn't like our soil too much. So here's another one. This one just just here. This is Jack by the Hedge. Um, it has a mustardy taste and then a garlicky taste. It's known as hedge garlic, garlic mustard. Um, you've also got in this patch, um, just here, you've got cleavers or goose grass or sticky willy. And also you have nettles just coming through. 
So in this patch, you've got three wild edibles and all three of these are actually really worthwhile. Jack by the Hedge is delicious. That is one really worthwhile picking. Really know what you're looking for because it can look very similar to other things. Sticky willy, goose grass, very easy to identify and obviously so are nettles. So I'm not picking any of it today. Um, but uh, certainly the, uh, the cleavers, what I would do with those is I would have them wilted down and cooked as a sort of green vegetable. Um, the jack by the hedge I eat, again you can have it as a, a vegetable like that or you can just have it in salads and that really is delicious. Um, and the nettles, well there are so many uses for nettles um, that there are far too many to, to list here but we like it in tea, in soups, in stews, dried um, and we also make wine out of it. Thank you.